skin that smoke wagon and see what happens. How's that for a slice of fried gold? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know how this machine worked. It seems to run on some form of electricity. And it was wrong. It was a bad call, Ripley. It was a bad call. Bad call. Some are good for fighting, others for dying. It's Just Two Movies. Welcome back to another episode of It's Just Two Movies. My name is Daniel King, and me, uh, not in me, with, and with, me. With, <laughs> with, with me, uh, with me in the studio, Dave, back back again for more. Um, so back at you. Dave, how, Coming how, for you, it's been a little bit. How well, are you, man? probably about a month or so since I've tickled your guys' ear holes. I, they, all, they all run together. So if you've never tuned into the show before, what we do is we watch two movies. Uh, We watch a good movie that at least one of us thinks is a good movie. Uh, We talk about it a little bit, break it down, give it a rating. We do a little improv comedy commercial break. And then we watch a movie that's at least reviewed poorly or doesn't look good or looks schlocky. That's got something in common with the first film. And uh, we figure out if it's good, if it's like so bad it's good, or if it just is, is just bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what we do here. <laughs> that's how we do. That's how we do it. So if the, yeah, <laughs> so so if this is not your first episode. That's going to seem incredibly redundant. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're uh, D- Dave. When Dave comes on, we're just we're we're both big Marvel fans. So we're just going to do every time Dave's on, we're going to do the Marvel franchise yep. uh, until we get through all of them, which I them? I expect we might in a couple of years. Um. Yeah, I mean, if they're coming out with, what, three, four movies a year, mm-hmm. we're putting out four or five episodes of these a year Yeah, right, so, with us, so, I mean, we'll catch up at least in, what, five, ten, yeah, so we're, good we're 20 years. <laughs> right, <laughs> and we're trying to sort through it uh, via character arcs rather than, like, chronological time. Right. Uh, so we've already done the Captain America character arc. Yep. The three movies, the three Captain America flicks. Uh, if you want to check that out, just look it up in our archive. There's three of them. And then we watched, uh, like two bad Captain America movies and then the toxic Avenger, I think. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's good stuff. So this one, since you picked Captain America, I am just picking what hero we're doing next. So we're going to go, we're going to go Thor. And the idea here is. By the time that we get to Thor Love and Thunder, it'll be out streaming so anybody can, you know, watch it and and enjoy the review as well. Yeah, I was kind of, I guess I want to say thrown off, but I wasn't expecting Thor from you because I knew it was your choice to, or your Mm -hmm. turn to choose. What do you think I was going to go with, just out of curiosity? I thought maybe... Spider Man, because I mean, it's a good arc. It's Spider Man. I, I really on. like Spider Man. Yeah. I'm a big <laughs> and then fan. from where we are, I mean, I could see you going Thor, but I thought Iron Man might get the stick first since it's Iron Man. He's I, kind of the. I certainly helm thought about it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do like. And Tony's then character with arc. with uh, the Dark World getting Thor two getting reviewed so poorly, that was another reason why. I have, uh, there is a, another movie podcast that I listen to, and w- one of the guys, he and I have very similar taste, and he's like, I think The Dark World's not bad, like, not bad at all, by any stretch, I think it's actually quite a good movie, uh, and I have only ever seen it once. I just don't remember loving it, In I don't the remember theater, hating it at I don't all. remember loving it either, so I'm wondering how that's aged. Uh, I will tell you this: this OG Thor movie. I have not seen this motherfucking thing in a minute. When it was like 2011 or so, when yeah. it came out, yeah, 2011. Yeah, I rewatched them all before the Infinity War dropped mm. in 2018. So I've probably seen this within the last five years, six yeah. years. But even then, I still wasn't expecting much out of it, and I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, yeah, there, there's a lot of good stuff in here, and we'll 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 kind of sort through it. Uh, but Thor is a 2013, uh, no, it's a PG-13 2011 action fantasy film, one hour, 52 minute runtime, maybe, evidently the run, runtime's wrong every time I read it. Uh, it's got a 7 out of 10 on IMDb, 77% on Rotten Tomatoes, 57 on Meta, uh, release date May 2nd, 2011, directed by Kenneth Branagh. Uh, story by Michael, story by J. Michael Straczynski. Wow, I fucking nailed that. And Mark 
Oh, fuck. Uh, Protosevic. You Best guess. No, I think I fucking guess. nailed it, though. And this pulled in a healthy $449.3 million in the box Damn. office. Yeah, not bad for a... You see 50, why they... Not bad for a 57 on Metacritic. Yeah, you see why they might have doubled down on the superhero movies. Right. Uh, stars Chris Hemsworth, uh, Natalie Portman, Tim Hiddleston, uh, excuse me, Tom Hiddleston, uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins, Jamie Alexander, Kat Dennings, Idris Elba, uh, I will get through this. There's a bunch of them, though. Uh, Ray, good people. Raven Ste- Ray Stevenson, Stellan Skazgard, uh, Josh Dallas, Rene Russo, Tedinobu Asano, best guess, Clark Gegg, Colm Fjord, Colm Fo- Colm Four, I guess Colm Four, uh, Joshua Cox, Samuel L. Jackson, Maximilio Hernandez, Dakota Goyo, and yeah, I mean, there's a couple other ones that I'm, I'm and, and briefly, uh, Jeremy Renner. Which I'd totally forgotten that uh, he was in this as Clint Barton. So I remember that part. Yeah, I remembered him coming into it. Just, I didn't remember. Just barely. Well, we'll get there. But yeah. yeah, I don't remember. I didn't remember the scene that put him there, but or like his intro into that scene. But. Mm-hmm. As far as the story goes, I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty hard to like just be a person and go, oh, you like movies? And you go, yeah, I like movies. And they go, have you ever seen Thor? And you go, I don't know what that is. I don't think that's going to happen. So let's say hypothetically about what's the story of this about with with no Rather spoilers. than the character of Thor, it comes from what the Nordic, is it uh is it just what Vikings used to believe? Is just, it just yeah, a just legend? The Norse, Norse legends, yeah. Okay. We're yeah. Norse realities in this in, the, yeah, in, in this, this world. Yeah, it's just Thor's prince, and he, what he's the mightiest hero of Asgard, and mm-hmm. he's supposed to claim the throne, but instead he shows himself to be not worthy of what he possesses, and that was what the movie follows: is is he worthy? Yeah, of what he is supposed to he's, have. Essentially, he gets a little too big for his britches. A little bit too arrogant, mm-hmm. too much of an ego. Mm-hmm. I always wondered how they were going to, when I was like, oh, they're going to make Avengers. I was like, if they're going to keep Thor in this, like if he's going to be a common recurring character, which luckily he has been, they have to do something where he's just too fucking serious all the time. Uh, so they gave him a sense of humor down the down the road, which is canonically, it's like he, he wasn't really funny until after he'd hung out with Stark. And kind of formed a sense of humor along that because he wasn't really jokey or jovial. Yeah, he kind of had to be taught. Yeah, he had to be taught because they don't really do humor on Asgard. Everybody's just very kind of dry. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I would I would say that's uh, very fair. Um, so let's go ahead and dig into it. Uh, from memory, I would have ranked this like near the bottom of MCU movies for me. From memory, I mean, if I was just throwing, like, a percentile, I I would probably have thought right in the middle of the pact. Maybe lower middle, but I would think middle of the pact. Yeah, this is, uh, this and probably the uh, the first canon Hulk film, the one with Edward Norton. Yeah. That I I didn't, I went and saw that in theaters and was, like, super underwhelmed. I don't. And I really liked Edward Norton, too. I feel like I mix up that one with the other iteration of the Hulk. The one with uh, Eric Bana? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I mix those two up a lot to where I really... I don't remember watching The Incredible Hulk in a long... That was the one with Abomination. Yeah. Do you think they just cast Eric Bana because his last name is Bana and not yeah, Banner? For sure. <laughs> I, I would have <laughs> never thought... Makes sense. Even in a casting call, I wouldn't have been like, you know who would be a great Bruce Banner? Not Eric Bana, and he's not terrible in the movie. It just I don't know. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't buy him as Bruce the, Banner. The yeah, leading, yeah, leading gamma physicist or whatever he is. Uh, as a spy, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Jason Bourne throw him in that role, maybe for sure. Uh, so you get your your first look at the Bifrost here, and I gotta say it's it's a lot more dramatic looking in this than it is presently in any of the marvel movies it's like a fucking storm do you see it in any of the other marvel movies up at this point it's like a rainbowy looking but like it being used 
Oh, are you saying just well in... not now because Asgard's blown up. Okay. I'll, I... By the way, before we get any further into this, I should throw a friendly reminder out there: whether you have or have not seen the movie Thor, if you would like to avoid MCU spoilers, at least to present films that have already been released, we will probably spoil some stuff between here and now because there's so many Easter eggs and connections. It's it's fun to back and forth. So uh, listen at your own uh, discretion, I guess. Were you saying you really, or you're saying the Bifrost that they're showing now? I don't remember them showing it in the MCU beforehand. Or are you just saying up until this point? Before this movie, this yeah. is the first appearance of it. Yeah, okay. in film, and I'm just saying it like it looks different now. Oh, I get what you're like saying. In the, yeah, with in how the more we came down movies. in like Infinity War. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it was more like he was. It was almost like they were becoming the beam of light to where in this one they're just being transported kind of fast. Yeah, in a in a, in a tornado. Rain, in a, yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah, it's cool. It's got it's got presence, uh, which I like. It feels like a big boom, like a Yeah, they refer to it as a rainbow aura or aurora. Mm -hmm. And I just Yeah, I feel like that described it pretty well. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. I uh, As I like far as that. how it looks outside of being inside of it. Mm hmm. You get the they're having a they're having it's like a it's like a flashback like Odin was back in the day and he's fighting ice giants and mm, look pretty good. Ice giant fight. looks yeah, fucking pretty the, damn good. Yeah, it's setting up all the lore of uh, Odin telling young Thor and young Loki of the last the last great war. The last great war. That's what it was. Yeah, with Jotunheim, which yeah. is the ice giants planet. Oh, he had a okay. When they refer to the realms, because that's a big part of the Asgard lore, is that it's a part of the nine realms. Realms are just worlds, like planets. R realms, I guess, is why they use the word realms. Like in Jotunheim, there's only ice giants. Wait, are you talking about Marvel lore, or are you talking about actual? I'm like, yeah, Marvel MCU. Okay, MCU canon. I have no idea. They might just mean nine different planets, but there's more than that. Because okay. there's also like no, yeah no that's there's what also I've like always nowhere assumed. it has its own fucking economy, and uh, where's the the where the Novacore is? Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, that planet. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, and then um, also the 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 Golden People, um, the Sovereign. They're they they have their own world as well. Ego, the Living Planet. Right. So that's another world. So like we have control over these nine realms. But yeah. How many, but... how many realms is that exactly, though? Yeah. I well, I saying. guess it's nine exactly. But I, how <laughs> how many is that compared to the, the scope of what's out there? Yeah. The way that they because Thor breaks it down in the movie a little bit, but they don't explain it well enough to where it kind of just seemed like maybe the world or the planet was just one of the access points of the realm. So that's why it was kind of tied in together to where they're calling Earth Midgard, but mm -hmm. maybe Earth is just the access point of Midgard. Which definitely could be the... Could be the uh... But yeah, kind of just after rewatching this, because that's what I thought. I thought realms were kind of like, not necessarily dimension, but it was almost like it's... Yeah, almost just its own space within the universe. Yeah. So the nine realms of Norse mythology are Asgard, Alfheim, Vanaheim, Niflheim, Jotunheim, Midgard, and Muspelheim. I don't know what Muspelheim is all about. Let's see. I don't remember that one. Maybe. Primordial land of fire and flames. Oh, that's where he oh. goes to get, what's his name? Big boy with his eyebrow. Take your tiara and knock it off your yeah, knock it off your head. Um Surter. Yeah. Surter. So I imagine that's uh that's probably where Surter resides. Sounds right. Yeah, if I had to guess. Which I don't, because I, I could look it up, but I'm not going to. So with Odin telling Child Thor and Loki about the Great War, that's when he explains that the frost giants are kind of the bad of the movie, and they're the ones that are trying to take out all of mortal life mm -hmm. by using their frost box. Yeah, their frost box. Exactly. They got a they got a cold cube, baby. They call it a casket. Is that what they called it? Yeah, they refer to it as a casket. It, the tesseract is what's inside it, though, right? No. Yeah, that's what I thought the first time watching the movie, but no, that's this not time it. watching, yeah, no, those are two different things. 
What? Yeah. So the, what the fuck happens? With uh, the, nobody you, uses the frost box again. That's you, a great thing. Yeah, you might just have to look it up. That frost box is, I forget the ancient. Fuck. It's something to do with that's the ancient, frost giant's power, that and that's why. Bird, that yeah, that's cube. why. Like they show the planet at the beginning, and it's all like frost covered and stuff. But when Thor goes back as an adult after they attack Asgard, it's like more it's, rocky. Yeah, it's like raining and stuff. Mm. It's because they don't have their power of the ancient frost box. They need that. They need that cold box, baby. So you get Thor. He's aged up. I gotta tell you, man, he's got blonde eyebrows in this yeah, one, and it's notice, not. It's, it's not doing any favors yeah, for it's anybody. Not good. It doesn't look good. I don't know really anybody the, who can pull that off. The rest of this movie, though, the look. It's fucking spot on. Maybe, uh, I think I secretly, I, I'm like, I wish the Ice Giants looked cooler, but they look great. Yeah. The the the, the, the size comes across. Uh, so they just, I don't know, they look like spooky blue demon guys. Asgard looks fucking amazing. They referred to that box relic as the casket of ancient winters. Thought they ended up breaking the Tesseract out of. Or what it was, but no. Totally different relic, just same, what, costume type of design or prop design. Mm -hmm. You know what's wild is a wild thing to think about. This is way fast forwarding. But for a spell of time, Loki commands the Mind Stone. Like, and isn't destroyed by it. And also isn't an all-powerful. I guess he just didn't know what he had, essentially. Maybe his staff helped numb, I, numb the that's, power of yeah, the Infinity Stone. Yeah, that's what I would stem. guess is that, well, maybe not numb it, but like kind of project it in a certain way. So mm. instead of being able to access the Infinity, the endless possibilities of using it, you had just a more concise yeah. power tool. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, the first time watching this movie, I really did think it was more of a Thor movie. But on this rewatch... It kind of swayed me more to it being more of a Loki origin and like kind of uh, maybe not the villain story, but the... it does a pretty good job of like, hey, here's 10 characters. That's a bit to swallow, but here they are. Let's introduce you to them all in a way that's consumable. Yeah, I think it did really well with introducing a secondary character in Loki, but making it still... Thor's movie and all the main interest being in Thor, but still giving Loki a very good storyline to making him a good villain or a good right, character right. just in the yeah. MCU. Uh, yeah, so the, the Frost Giants, they fucking break in, and Anthony Hopkins is like, it's not a big deal, baby. Don't even worry about it. And then Thor's like, rah, 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 and he's like, silence! He's like, man, Anthony Hopkins is such a good get for this like he's so stoic and epic and just an incredible actor anyway to get him as odin and to like him to not die for you to make all those movies until the character is canonically gone like right just fucking jackpot with that yeah, not he... like i'm not like i'm saying anthony hopkins is about to die i hope not i like, anthony <laughs> hopkins is great but he's an older gentleman for sure Oh, you get to see the uh, destroyer robot kind of right up front. The ice giants that break in trying to get the chili box. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then the destroyer yeah, the comes out and fucking just vaporizes suit. him. Yeah, just one shot. What does it... Yeah, I didn't really know anything about the destroyer suit. It just... It's just the suit. It's just a sentient... Is it sentient or is it just... Uh... It's kind of like... Uh, whoever commands it. Okay. Sort of thing. Okay, it's just like enchanted. To yeah. Be controlled. I mean, as far as the destroyer suit goes, if you haven't seen this or you're not familiar with what we're talking about, it's uh, it's like the robot from the day the Earth stood still. It's like very, very similar. If you haven't seen the day the Earth stood still, it's just a it's just a tall robot that shoots a laser. Yeah. Yeah. It's stainless it's dangerous. Steel. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is stainless steel. <laughs> it's really it nice. Like. It's it looks like metal. a giant kitchen appliance. It is weird re-watching this, though, because it was like uh, when Loki's like, I know what you mean, brother. Like, they've invaded our defenses and no one can stop them but you. I was like, oh, he's manipulating him. And then he goes to Jotunheim with him. And I'm like, mm, so he Wait, wasn't manipulating yeah. him. He just was along for the ride or whatever. 
But then he was also because he's the one who showed the Frost Giants how to get into right. Asgard in the first place. So he's such a sneaky little devil. Yeah, I really liked how they did that in this movie because they did it. I mean, even knowing the future movies, you're more keen to seeing. They made him seem more sinister. Maybe you're just seeing it more because you know. Because I know what he, what he right, gets up that's to. That's what yeah. I'm saying is that I feel like they did it subtly enough. To where the first time I didn't really pick up on even just like the camera movements or like the panning to him looking away when he's saying something. Oh, yeah. Just to get him to where it doesn't seem like he's telling the full truth or that he has the ulterior motive right. or something. Yeah. Yeah. You can definitely kind of pick up on all those yeah, ulterior a lot more. motive yeah, moments. More from the beginning, I feel like. Or from this scene where, yeah, they're discussing. There were, there were a couple of things that I thought were incongruities. But as the Marvel Cinematic Universe expands, Loki, I wouldn't say he becomes a coward, but to a certain extent, if he doesn't have to put himself into danger, he's not going to do it. You know what I mean? It seems yeah. like he unnecessarily does in this one at least once. Or maybe not. Maybe that's part of the plan the whole time, you know? Yeah, that's how I feel like the MCU just does it. They do the writing clever enough to where you think you caught them in a plot hole or something and yeah. they're like no this is the whole thing the oh, whole time this is how it works everybody baby. knew we planned out <laughs> we planned out fucking this 12 years of point. movies yep uh yeah so so thor he's uh, loki kind of manipulates him and, and he's rallying the troops he gets lady sif and the and the three uh three warriors the, the the quartet the asgard quartet and they're gonna go go to jotunheim to kick some asses I like the tussle that they get in here, where they're like kind of showing everybody's different skills and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? When they're uh -huh. at Jotunheim and they start fighting the ice giants oh, and they're yeah. like trying to get yeah, out. Yeah, once they get there, yeah, and they start, yeah, doing the little team fight. Yeah. Everybody I, shows off their powers. I really, I really, really enjoyed that. It's, uh. Yeah, Thor just kicks ass. Because, well, because they, they, they kind of showcase everybody that's in their, in their yeah, little in the group. group. It's Thor and Loki and Sif and then the other three guys. And yeah, they all they have their own kind of individual styles about them. And it was uh, just, I thought it was a good scene. Yeah, they had Volstag. He was that barbarian looking dot guy. Mm, Hogan yeah. was the, he refers to later, somebody calls him Jackie Chan looking motherfucker. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and then Fondral. And he's, he's the, the he's the kind of Zorro y guy. Yeah, Peter or not Peter Pan. What did they call him? I he's, forget what they call him. He's kinda him in Peter, the Pan movie, yeah, Peter Pan looking. I think they call him Robin Hood. Yeah, Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got Robin Hood, Jackie Chan, and what's the other what do you call the other guy? Oh, they called the girl Xena. They didn't I I, I wrote that down because they didn't have a name for the barbarian looking dude. Yeah, they just did the girl, the Asian looking guy. Paul Bunyan and, couldn't have thrown that in there. <laughs> Yeah, throw Paul Bunyan Dave in there. Dave the Barbarian or something. Right. Something, man. They're, they're, they're trying to escape. And they, you know, as is common in, in Thor storylines, a big monster gets released and it's a... It looks good. The the big monster thing. Yeah, it's kind of like a rancor looking sort of yeah. thing. But it's got... It's, you know, quadrupedal. It's got a big tail and shit. Get nasty, nasty looking critter. Looks good. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I felt like all the... Uh... The CGI during the Odin story kind of seemed off, but all the mm -hmm. practical stuff and all the frost giant stuff there on were, the Odenheim looked great. There were like three, one's very minor. It was during the Odin stuff in the beginning yeah. that you were talking about. Uh, and there's two more, and we'll we'll get to them. I'll, I'll point them out in a bit. Uh, there were like three total things in CGI when I'm like, mm, but this yeah, is 2011. Not... And I will yeah. say, like, when they get back to Asgard and Odin, like, she, he's like, fuck you, Thor, you piece of shit. You're going to Earth and you're just going to be a, just a regular man, just a normal, just a thormal man. Thor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he's just going to be a thormal man. And Odin strips him of his, his armor. He's like, in the name of my father and his father. Uh, I thought that looked fucking amazing. Yeah. I so think... for some of the CGI to be like a little sloppy Joe, some of it looks yeah, exceptional. Yeah, you see where they put their budget at. Yeah. yeah. Asgard looks phenomenal. And Did you, where'd you watch of it? Where'd you watch this? Disney Plus at home. I also watched it on Disney Plus at home. I wonder if they are able to redoctor those movies and like do a, a more cleaned up release on disney plus i wonder if that's oh, a I thing that they, i think they you know have done saying? that i think they have i think it's its own category on the marvel section of disney plus mm, because some of this stuff i was like man 
this looks really fucking good for 2011. Like, outstanding. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was like, I wonder if some of this isn't doctored up a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, neither of us watched like a DVD release. I I do own this film on Blu-ray, but I didn't watch it on Blu-ray. I just, because it was on Disney Plus and it's a couple of clicks with the remote. Uh, Yeah, so he he sends Thor to Earth and Jane Darcy and Professor Selvig find Thor. But now now he's unworthy and he's just a he's just a thormal man. He's just a thormal. Yeah. And he's gotta figure out how to get worthy and not be a little bitch. And that's kinda how the rest of this Yeah, goes. when Odin was sending Thor off and taking away his power and banishing him and whatnot, I thought it was very strange that he threw uh Mjolnir, Mjolnir in there after him. Yeah. And, like, I wrote that down. I'm like, why did he do that or what? But later on, I kind of felt like he did have a plan for it. And he threw that hammer mm-hmm. to give Thor that purpose. Just wanted to teach him a lesson. Yeah. That's it. But, and, yeah. He, and he did. Okay, so I do really like this part where, the like, the hammer comes down. Like, I don't know what they say. It is, like, 50 miles away from where he's at or whatever. And all these rednecks find it out in the woods and they're like, ye are in the desert. And they're like, yeehaw, baby. And they're trying to do, they're they're just lining up. They're tailgating it. They're just having a tailgating party. There's dudes out there with barbecue grills. Everybody got coolers. They're drinking beers. Stan Lee hooks his pickup truck to it. Oh, yeah. Fucking rips the bed of his truck out of. Oh, dude, I would be (laughs) so in on that. Like, hey, you want to go tailgate? Watch all these people try to pick up this hammer. But (laughs) fucking count me in, baby. It's the Excalibur of of tools. Yeah, they really portrayed that well with it trying to be the sword of the stone. Just mm-hmm. anybody and everybody. Tra- it's just a hammer. It's just a big mallet right. sticking Everybody's up like, out of the dirt. Piece of a satellite. Does that look like piece of a satellite to you? Like, it's very clearly a hammer. Yeah, and it's not like it's buried into the earth or just the handle sticking out. No, no the whole the hammer clear- is there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> it's fucking wild, man. I'm loving it. Uh, but now Odin, like Loki, Loki approaches Odin and he's like, Hey, listen, I know I'm half frost giant, you bitch. Cause the frost giant touched me and I got, I got blue skinned and everybody else got burned. Yeah. Well, he asked him something so, at first. He's so like, you, am I, am I a warlock or what did he say? He asked he him asked, if he's a, he's just another, uh, he's just another uh, trinket or a, oh, weapon, I, or a trophy yeah, that yeah, he's like got he locked away. That. Yeah. And Odin, just another stolen relic. And what does Odin do? If I can go to sleep, baby, <laughs> he goes <laughs> into like, the uh, he goes into the Odin sleep, which is like he's still conscious, but I guess he's like regaining power or whatever. Yeah, I don't. They didn't really explain anything about it. They just kind of made it seem like, yeah, he was in some sort of stasis, comatose yeah. stasis or whatever. And uh, Frigga, she's like, oh, he put it off for so long. His wife, oh, Frigga yeah, is Odin's the, wife, the and she's queen. like, he put it off for so long, I fear he may never wake up, because I guess the last time he did it, he was out for a super long time, but yeah. I guess it was a really refreshing Odin sleep, because he's been up for a while now, so, he had just a little nap by comparison for Odin sleep, I guess. Yeah, I guess it could be he could not typically sleep, <laughs> he could just be... 24 7 going uh, yeah i sleep I fucking guess, I sleep baby. once a millennia yeah but it could be for a decade you know Who what knows? i mean it could be for 10 years you never know uh yeah so so loki takes up the f- takes up the throne essentially yeah and- we find out that loki is the frost giant king's son mm-hmm. and that's when odin stole him or took him after the what'd you call that war what they call it the last great the last war? great war that is what she called it did they is Loki just innate? Like was he born with his I think I think it's a situation where like some people can manipulate magic and some people cannot. Or some people can only manipulate a specific kind of magic. Because they talk about how Frigga is like a witch. Right. And she's just amazing at magic. Yeah. And Loki learned most of his magic from Frigga. But whenever Odin found him as a baby his skin turned from looking like a frost giant to looking like Odin, like looking ass- like a human. I assume I- that's some sort of Odin magic. Oh, okay. I was assuming that it was Loki trying, like, I don't know. Yeah, just some type of survival mechanism to, you know what I'm saying? To where Could he be. looks more like yeah, whoever's trying if to you care always, for him. If you always had it turned on, though, you, 
you wouldn't know since yeah. you were a baby if it was right. on the That's whole time. What, yeah, if it's just a defense mechanism or a safety mechanism to make them look like of the race that's taking care of them. That's good stuff. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. So anyway, Natalie Portman's Jane Foster, and uh, she's 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 kind of helping Thor out. She's looking for him because he's important to her research, and she's she's researching stuff, and she's on the, the brink of a breakthrough. Yeah, she figures that she doesn't have any because Shield came in and stole all her data. She doesn't have Took any, all her shit. Doesn't have anything to go off of, so she needs the person who is in that anomaly. She's just got anomaly. one really hunky dude. Yeah. So I she's mean, got he's him. Pretty and, hunky. Yeah, he's pretty hunky, and he's like, "Oh, the coffee." Ooh, he's like, you "Dye your eyebrows." He's like, "I like this. Uh, this drink is good. I like it." Smashes the fucking coffee cup on the ground. It's like another. Just does weird, you know, uh, weird Viking shit in modern society. Natalie Portman. She's gonna give him a ride to his hammer. Yeah, before Jane was gonna give him a ride, he goes and Thor goes into that pet store. Because they decide to go their separate ways. Yeah. So Thor's like, all right, we can go our separate like, ways. He goes a into horse. a pet store. He's like, give me your finest horse. <laughs> so like, we wait. sell dogs, cats. Gerbils. Birds. Hamsters. All right, your biggest one. Give large me, enough to ride. Give me one of those large <laughs> enough to ride. <laughs> yeah, just give him a cat or a dog to ride on. Yeah, it's fucking, it's fucking great. Uh, it is a bummer that Natalie Portman kind of declined to be in more of these after two. She yeah, was just like, I, eh. I remember hearing about struggles with her either on set or off set or was it a contract or what? Yeah. But I, it seemed like by the end of the movie, the way they ended it, they knew that she wasn't going to be portrayed in the second one. Right. And now she's back for the fourth one. Yeah. So uh, th- that'll be a that'll be a good triumphant return. Yeah, I if, I, I liked her if, in this I wonder movie. if she was like, "Fuck, I kind of missed out on that cash cow." Yeah, because they might have let Hemsworth go sooner to make her Thor sooner. Honestly, yeah. Uh, if she was still on it, yeah. But uh, I'm glad they're bringing Hemsworth back for a fourth one. For sure. I wanted one more at least to close it out, and then maybe a cameo down the road. Yeah, because <clears throat> yeah, Ragnarok was definitely a good trilogy ender, but the Infinity War and Endgame definitely put a good yeah. That you need that a post good saga post yeah. saga wrap up, pass the torch. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's gonna be weird though, because there's so many of these Marvel movies that are coming out. It's like here's a new guy, and then here's another situation, but it's a passing of the torch. Right. Like, That's a lot of it's a lot of passing that. of the torch movies. Uh, like, I mean, for instance, the the Black Widow movie, Passing of the Torch. Yeah. The uh, uh, Shang Chi. Here's a new guy. Moon Knight. Even though it's a series, here's a new guy. The next Captain America movie. Here's a new guy. Passing Hawkeye, of the torch. Passing of the torch. Hawkeye. Passing of the torch. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of that. Did you guys start Moon Knight yet? No, I watched one episode and I was like, it's only six episodes. I'm just gonna wait. Yeah, the second episode will draw you in even more. Oh yeah. Well, you. by the time that this podcast comes out, by the time this actually airs, uh, I probably will have seen it all by by that point because this is gonna be. Uh, let's see, one, two, three. This is going to be four weeks away from now. And I think there's, what, three episodes out now? Three or four? At most four. Have you, have, are you up to date on Moon Knight? Hmm? I'm up to date. Was there four? I want to say the last week was, the, or this week was the fourth one. I don't know. No spoilers. It's fun learning new things about Moon Knight. Yeah, it's Knight weird they kill them I, off right at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see so many like posts that are like not spoilery. It's just like, here, learn a little more about Moon Knight. Mm, yeah. And uh, it's it's cool learning more stuff about him because I never really knew anything about him. Yeah, I had, same here. I had a fuck ton of comic books when I was a kid, and I had one where Moon Knight was in it. He wasn't the main character. He just was in it. Uh, it was like in three frames of it. So I, right. I was just like, oh, it's just some other yeah, guy. Yeah, and their storytelling, I feel like, is perfect for the big screen because that's what they do with their movies is they will add, just sprinkle a character in the movie mm-hmm. and just make you like them enough to go check out their standalone and movie. We'll, yeah, we'll and then elaborate. that movie will have... Well, that's just a the... sprinkle of one character in it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that leads yeah. you down a rabbit hole of twenty five movies. And yeah, no shit. Oh, they're so smart the way they put these together. And one thing I think that Marvel really nails with everything, as they did in even this movie from two thousand eleven, is the look. Visually, it's fucking great. 
everybody's like armor and costumes and fucking just everything like the wardrobe for everybody looks fucking incredible and i feel like it's how they and it would have been an easy thing to fuck up yeah you know it's how I they mean? tie it all together it's just mm-hmm. it's not because if you took any one of those characters or if you showed thor and his full armor regalia and midgard mm-hmm. it just wouldn't have the same effect whenever he is surrounded by everybody else in full armor and oh, full yeah. get up to look like the <sighs> nordic freaking viking clan hell yeah and I can't get over how good Asgard did look. It really did make you feel like a, I don't know, I want to say elite. I guess it would be elite. Yeah, almost what you would think that God should have, like things being made out of gold or just being elegant. Or... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just everything's got a cool aesthetic to it, man. I, I think I might have actually already said this before, but I have a note about it. I just wanted to make sure that I said it out loud. All the footage of Asgard looks fucking incredible. They really wanted to show it off, and I see why. Because it looks amazing. Like, it's just really, really good stuff. Yeah, and they definitely made it stand out from other realms on the sense that, like, they put a lot of their buildings and their, uh, like, architecture on top of, like, mountains and cliff sides to where they didn't demolish the natural scenery to add what they were building they yeah. just built on top on of it on top of it yeah, yeah even if it made it, it look really where it meets the ground might be like a fucking you know 20 degree angle or right whatever. to where it makes you think that humans like we don't build like that because it's just not plausible or practical but these are gods these are or gods. higher beings yes it's easy to where it's, yeah yeah easier for them to have this type of architecture so natalie portman Takes Thor, Chris Hemsworth, to get his hammer, and they have, like, a very kind of, like, E.T. compound going on there. Are you getting some E.T. vibes off that? E.T. for home? No. Uh, With all the plastic tubes and whatnot? No. Not particularly. Yeah, Yeah, it didn't make me feel that way, but... I thought it was strange how they just set up that whole facility. Is that what they were going for? Was the ET it was vibe? just kind I of feel a, like it was, just it was kind of a an homage up, to something but... pop up facility? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of well, because Thor's an alien, you know, essentially, and I wondered about. Well, that. I mean, like, even I wonder how much how, this is like a hat tip. To... Even how like rounded the structure was because it was supposed to be on top of that crater where uh, the hammer was. Dumb design. Yeah, it for just a base threw Real, me off. The, very it made me think that it was homage to something but i did not catch the reference yeah maybe et maybe not i don't fucking really know (laughs) uh but dr selvig comes and he busts thor out because he can't pick up the hammer he's still not worthy he's a little bitch and he's like oh man i'm being sad and dr selvig is like this is my boy donald don't even worry about it he's on steroids and he got too drunk i got him and for some reason shield the most paranoid bunch of suits on the face of the planet are like okay yeah that was one part i did think was strange because they like they brought up his fake id and it was showing up what did it say like security risk or something like it was fraudulent oh yeah yeah something but then they just disregarded it they just let it go yeah i guess let's just see where this goes so selvig comes and busts him out and he's like oh sorry he's a drunk and he's on the roids and what do they do they go get drunk yeah uh they have a fucking couple of boilermakers (laughs) And uh, just Boilermaker, just a shot and a beer. It is just a shot of whiskey and a tall beer. That's it. Nothing ever specific had to it. No, it's gross. It's not not my thing anyway. Certainly, I if you love Boilermakers, write me at it's just two movies at gmail dot com. I'll try one. I'll try some. one on the show if you know a good combo. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'd come down to the combo because I've had that Angry Balls before, where you get the Angry Orchards and the Fireball, is, yeah, or whatever. That, yeah. Uh, ap- apple cider or not? What is it? Uh, what are they called? Apple ale. Yeah. And then yeah, you put a fireball shot in it. Apple cinnamon. The good. first time I ever had Angry one, it balls. was a uh, it was a Budweiser and uh fucking Jack Daniels. And I am not really a big fan of either of those. I don't really have a problem with, with Budweiser. I'll drink it. It just kinda gives me a headache. Uh but Jack Daniels, I'm just not crazy about sour mash bourbon specifically. I do like whiskeys though. Uh, something about that sour mash, it just reminds me of the taste or smell of vomit, and I can't get over it. You know what I mean? But if you're out there and you're like, oh, man, you got to have a fucking a Goose Island fucking whatever and an Irish whiskey. Yeah, sure. Write me at it's just two movies at gmail.com on socials at yeah. it's just two movies. 
Uh, we're on Facebook too, but I would say that's probably the number one place where we do the least amount of action. Is yeah, on I feel Facebook. like just asking for a Boilermaker in, in the sense of a bar, what would they give you? They would just give like you a large draft beer and a shot of whatever the house whiskey is. Yeah, it's just the weirdest thing. <laughs> it sounds fucking gross, but I bet it's how you tie on a good buzz real quick. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, just give me a tall boy with a shot. Yeah, so they, they go get drunk, and Thor brings uh, Dr. Selvig home, and then him and Natalie Portman are kind of having a moment talking about stars and science and, and, and butterflies and whatever. Yeah, and then there's a the big part with Loki. Does he Does he come... Oh yeah, to Midgard or oh, to Midgard, he, or does he just like project <laughs> himself? I think it's just a projection. Okay, that makes more sense. No, well, he he went because then he yeah. when he's leaving, he has to confront uh, Heimdall. Uh, Heimdall played by Idris Elba. Yeah, I forgot he was the one who played that, but he does it just so well, and he's just so suave. He's just so smooth. He is smooth as fuck. Yeah, but yeah, Loki comes in and tells. Uh, uh, Thor, what, he tells him that Odin is dead. Yeah, it's I your now fault. Have, yeah, it's your fault. I now have to mom, bear the burden of the throne. Yeah, mom doesn't even want you to come home. And that's the hardest hitting thing right there. Is yeah, even mom doesn't even want your mom ass. Mom fucking hates your punk She's ass because like, you killed dad, rocks. you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Serious question, because the the lady Sif and the and the three Stooges are like, let's go to Midgard and, and rescue Thor. And they go to Loki, and he's like, I'm king now, bitch. Yeah. And they're like, well, just end Thor's banishment then, because we're on the brink of war, and, you know, we could really use yeah. Asgard's greatest warrior. Right. It seems like it just makes <laughs> a lot of sense. And he's like, nope, my, my first order is king cannot be to undo the last order of the previous king, uh, which is Odin, who is just in Odin's sleep, but Loki's acting as though he's already dead. So Loki goes to Niflheim to tell Lofi, king of the frost giants or whatever. He's like, listen, I'll let you in. He goes where? He goes to Jotunheim to talk to Luffy, Lofi, Lofi, king of the frost giants. He's like, listen, I'll fucking let you in because Odin's in the Odin sleep. And you just fucking Odin creep, creep and give him a Odin stab and and you can kill him. while You can assassinate him essentially while he's sleeping. Right. And uh, he's like, all right, man, I'm down for that. that. In return, I will give you this ice box. I'll give you the ice box. Some people call it refrigerator. Some people call it a casket of ancient. That's right. Some people call it a a cooler. (laughs) Yeah, I did read one interesting thing whenever I was looking up stuff about Thor. Yeah, and it said that in uh, it says is Nor is Norris or Nordic a language? Is that still something yeah. that's spoke? Okay. They oh, I said, don't know if it's a dead language. I think Nordic is still alive and well, at least for the most part. Well, I guess for what I'm saying, it is because Disney released Thor with the subtitles in Nordic. And I thought it was interesting, but they said that like the ice giant king Lafi, mm-hmm. that's in the actual uh, like legend, the Nordic legend of Thor, mm. Lofi is actually his mother's name, and it's a feminine name. So they actually, his real name is Lafur, which is the male name or the more mm. masculine name. So that's what he's called in the Nordic version huh. of Thor. Is well, Lafur. I did look it up. Some of the most well-known dead languages include Latin, Sanskrit, Old English, Aramaic, Ancient Greek, Old Norse, Coptic, uh, Liberian. Etruscan and Proto Indo European, just to name a few. Yeah, so those are the languages people learn to be like, oh, I can, I can oh, speak Latin. Look how fancy I am. Try to order a cup of coffee in Latin <laughs> anywhere. Fucking try it. Actually, Latin would be, they'd probably figure it out. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I have a serious question though. Is Lady Sif a Valkyrie? And if not, why, why the fuck not? Why not? Yeah. Uh, She's like a badass warrior lady. Well, I guess the Valkyrie was probably like a royal guard army type situation or whatever. Yeah, I don't know if they explained it. Or what did... Do you remember what Thor called her as she was the most fierce, just like the most fierce warrior? They didn't call her anything specific. No, no. He was just like a fiercer warrior you could not find. (laughs) Yeah. Or whatever. 
She's just one of those rebellious, too cool for school, can't even stay in the clique and long enough to do be. You have, do you have a favorite joke from this? I have one favorite joke. And it's when Thor is talking to Coulson and he's like, yes, yeah, son of coal. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I have that wrote down. That's my, uh, my favorite joke in the whole movie. Because yeah. I will say this one, as far as the Marvel movies are concerned, not a lot of laughs in it. Yeah. Um, the, like yeah. you've got Darcy for comic relief. Uh, Darcy played by Kat Dennings and uh, Dr. Selvig, I guess, has a couple of lines. Yeah, I feel like some of it just comes with. Thor's culture shock of coming to Midgard. Like, it's almost just the situational comedy that he's doing. It's not purposeful yeah. comedy from his character. It's right. just funny because Like he him smashing know. a coffee right. cup yeah. in a diner. Exactly. Like another. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, Selvig, played by Stellan Skarsgård, uh, Skarsgård, excuse me, he has, a, he has a couple of good little jabs, but I mean, they're, they're nothing... He's not bringing the fucking house down, but that joke about son of coal, like situationally, because he's Thor Odin's son, right? And that's yeah. son of Odin. He's used to that. And he's Coulson, so he thinks he's son, son of coal. coal. It's, yeah. it's good stuff. Yeah, it's hilarious. That did stand out to me. Yeah. Oh, did you watch whenever? Because I we mentioned that we watched this on Disney Plus, and now they add those. What do they call them? The one offs, the one shots. Yeah, the one shots. I haven't watched them all yet. I haven't watched them all. Actually, I don't know which ones they are, but did you see that they added the new Thor one? No. That it was from Coulson, and it was called The Funny Thing Happened on the Way of the Thor's Hammer. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I and bet that's good. No, it's pretty I'll, funny. Man, I love Coulson. If it wasn't for Coulson, I don't think I ever would have. I don't think I even would have checked out Agents of yeah, S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, or even would have But I, about I watched it, yeah. like five or six seasons of it. I'm not sure how much of it there was, but I watched all of it. And right up until the last season, pretty good it got a little cheesy around like season four uh but man there's a lot of good stuff in there a lot of good world building that still is all mcu canon all of it yeah i actually noticed on disney plus how they have the mcu and phases like if mm -hmm. you go to disney plus and click on marvel they'll have like phase one through four and whatnot mm -hmm. they put uh like what if all in the new phase four to mm. where, like, I just wasn't for sure if they were going to actually add that into MCU canon, but I guess they are. With yeah, I'm curious about I'm cur the phases. I'm curious about Into the Spider Verse since that's a Sony, that's a Sony property. I'm wondering how that's going to. Yeah, play. I think they anyway, came out and said Sony is making their own universe, so that like Morbius is it's going to be in the Sony MCU. To where it's you still going to be a multiversal in the MCU, you but it's not gonna, the actual... You think they're going to bring back Garfield, and that's going to be... Yeah, he hates Mondays. Garfield the cat. I bet they'll bring him back. Dave, that's the best joke. That's the best joke you could make. And you don't know this real time, because real time, this episode comes out Monday. But our episode about 99 Homes stars Andrew Garfield, and we make that Garfield the cat joke... <laughs> like 30 times like 30 times <laughs> yeah. in that so that's fucking perfect perfect yeah so do you think they'll bring back andrew garfield the cat yeah for sure his, i'll say there's a bunch of he'll be eating lasagna hating mondays he'll um, finally get to fight that alien he's been dreaming about yeah they had the twitter monster release on him to where people were just saying give me amazing spider-man 3 and it seemed like the I thought Andrew Garfield was a great Peter Parker. The thing I didn't like about those movies is stop putting him in high school. Just quit. Yeah. He's clearly in his mid twenties. <laughs> like he's you're not passing him off as a sixteen year old. A busy guy, Lee's kid. Not 16. even close. But you know what the great thing is, is everybody knows Spider Man's origin. Everybody. Yeah, that's because it's been beat to MCU death. The MCU did it so well is because MCU, they just mentioned it. They He's did just it like, perfectly. Oh, like, by He's Spider-Man Spider first, but we'll give him his his three movie arc will be his tragic origin story. Oh, so yeah, it wasn't even the first movie that they. It wasn't even Homecoming that they mentioned the spider bite. Nope. I forget which one of what it might have been. I think it's the the one that just came out. Yeah. Uh, no way home. I think so. Yeah. Well, anyway, back to uh, back to Thor. Oh, Sp Spider Man's yeah, a different uh, different one. one. We're still running. So Thor, he he finally he's sacrificing himself or whatever, and he gets his hammer back, and he's Thor again, not Donald. 
and he's gonna he's going to Asgard to slap some nuts. And then uh, some, this is another part: the Thor versus Loki after he destroys oh, yeah. the destroyer. There's yeah. some kind of wonky oh, CGI. Yeah. When, when the warriors come back, they tell him that it's just not a great your dad's fight. not dead. Yeah, that that Thor Loki fight's not good. But yeah, they they they, they go to the the. Lady Sif and the Three Stooges, they go to they go to fucking Heimdall and they're like, hey, listen, we want to go to get Thor. And he's like, huh, well, I got to serve Loki. Lucky for you, it's my lunch break and he leaves <laughs> or whatever. So they go, they get Thor, the destroyer comes down because Loki can know that is what happening somehow. He sees them leave on the, on the fucking Einstein Rosen Bridge, uh, which we call it Rainbow Bridge. Uh, Bifrost Bridge. Bifrost, thank you. Uh, so tell Thor and he, ooh, he's worthy now. He gets his gets his shit back, and he's going to Asgard to beat some ass. Yeah, Thor sacrifices. He says, "Take my life, but mm-hmm. save all these mortals." Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's every movie that that's the switch. You well, that's a, sacrifice that's a good yourself. arc though, because he was like, "No, fuck those people. They disrespected us. Let's go to right. war." But right. he didn't understand. Let's that, like, sacrifice all of my people's lives. Innocent people get fucking yeah. murdered in war, and uh, you know, if it weren't so damn profitable, I don't think we'd do it either. Uh, anyway, so uh, there's some kind of wonky CGI stuff in that fight that I'm not like, eh. like just the fight choreography for that one specific fight wasn't really driving me crazy. You know what I mean? I was just like, eh, it's, yeah, I didn't notice that's that the, the flattest, much... the flattest of the fights. Yeah, that's that's what I felt. I felt that this should have been the climax of the two strongest people in the movie. And it just kind of fell flat. Of yeah, and th- and there's one other moment where Heimdall is like killing some 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 ice giants or whatever. And there's a bit where he's kneeling and he stands up, and I'm pretty sure it's CGI, and it doesn't need to be. It's just a man standing up. You know what I mean? Like yeah, but it's it like lo- his entire it looks suit like was weird CGI, CG- so yeah. they just like mo- motion captured him yeah, into it. it. That part's not a great look, but uh, those three parts uh, that's not a that's not a big deal. Yeah. So what's what's Thor got to do to keep the keep the fucking ice giant army from coming? What's he got to do? He's got to smash the fucking smash the bridge, the rainbow bridge that goes to the. The yeah, so Thor, or not Thor, Loki uses the Bifrost to try to destroy Jotunheim by mm-hmm. just using it as a light cannon to fucking rip the planet apart. Yeah. Which I thought, pretty smart movie. He's probably been thinking about that as a while. Yeah, he's a fucking pretty <laughs> <laughs> And Thor can't shut it off, so what does he got to do? Just got hammer break, that, just hammer, hammer that, that baby. Put the hammer down. Watching too much Wreck-It Ralph. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, so he busts the Bifrost. Odin wakes from his Odin sleep. And then, uh, that, I mean, that's pretty much it, right? He's like, oh, forgive me, Jane Foster, because now he can't go back to, to Earth. Yeah, and that's where it sets up. Or that's where I thought they kind of decided. I guess thinking about it, I guess the MCU doesn't plan too far ahead. Like, they kind of plan out their arcs, but not necessarily the movie specifically. They just kind of have the start and the end. So yeah. you could have easily wrote Jane into the second one if you really wanted to. I think but you just, did. She's just back with, in the second one, right? Yeah, but not as like a major character, was she? She gets the like the ether inside her or whatever. Yeah. I think she's but back she's in just it in like, a minor way. She's just like sick the whole time. She's not like Yeah. Yeah, so that that pretty much uh pretty much wraps it up. I mean, like he saves the day. Once Thor breaks the bridge, he get Odin. Yeah, he comes out of the sleep and saves him from falling off the bridge. Mm-hmm. And then Loki is attached to Thor. And then what? I don't remember what was said that made Loki let go. Yeah, I guess Loki just thought he just found out that he wasn't. He's not the like son. Yeah, he's just hated. No. Yeah, he's just a bitch. <laughs> he's just a fucker. Yeah, but what Thor was holding on to Odin, and Thor and Loki was holding on to Thor or something, and then Loki fucking just suicides himself and lets go off the Rainbow Bridge into the abyss of nothing. Into it doesn't show where he goes. You just oh, assume yeah. that he dies because then the next scene they cut to everybody having a party. Loki's dead. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> But half the party seems sad because Loki's dead. I mean, surely it's trickery. Yeah. 
Because that's his whole bag. Right. That's what you make. That's what it makes it think. What it makes you think. But then they say, yeah, Thor is, uh, he's mourning his brother. Then he's also mourning. They kind of, as one thing I didn't like too much about the movie is that they, they wanted this Thor and Jane relationship to be so, like, I don't know if it's love at first sight or how they fell in love, but they just, just do like a inf pretty infatuation. Yeah, they, I feel like they do a pretty bad job with trying to get their emotions across. Yeah, I don't know. It if seems they... like it seems from an outside viewer that if they were to bone, that would like kind of extinguish their fondness they have for each other. Like it yeah. might just be like a. It just yeah, seems just like a, a physical lust. attraction. Yeah. Uh yeah, so yeah, they, they were going that I think that probably fell a little short. Yeah, and, and then it you ends get your... with Thor and Heimdall looking off into the abyss mm -hmm. and Heimdall can actually Do they ever say how he can or do you know why how oh, Heimdall can old, just see everything anywhere old, uh, all the fucking, time? It's, he can just... it's dark magic. Because yeah, he can just like oh, can you see her? As dark Thor magic. Time, though, can you see dark her? magic granted to him from his ancestors. I was like, yeah, I can see her anytime. What you want to wait till she's yeah. taking her titties out? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're good. What do you want me to know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what do <laughs> you yeah, want? She, uh, Heimdall lets Thor know that Jane is searching for him. Dum 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 bum 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 bum. End of the bum, movie. Bum, bum. Thor has hope. Post credit, <laughs> post credit scene. Bum, 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 bum. And you get the post credit scene where Fury is Fury and Selvig. They're there. He's like, "Ooh, check out this test wrecked." And then you can tell that Loki is like doing a possession on on Professor Selvig. Yeah, I didn't know uh, what they were trying to portray there because. At first, it kind of seemed like Loki was doing the his invisible shit, where he just kind of makes himself not visible by the other people, right? To where he's still standing there, but then he says a phrase. What does he say? He says, "Well, I guess that's worth a look." Talking about the infinite power of the Tesseract, right? But then Selvig says the same thing, repeats the same thing as if he is being possessed, or as I think if for that is Loki just doing the maybe for weaker willed beings he can just do a, a light possession or like maybe even um uh persuasion rather yeah than, but... than a full-on possession yeah yeah for shows and then whenever he was walking in he mentions his or mentions the unprecedented foster theory I thought that was, I didn't catch that the first time, because that was Jane's last name. Yeah. I didn't know if that was just something that they just That's threw why he in said there, it's unprecedented, because she has yeah. a new theory based on his, what right. Thor told her about the about Nine Realms the, and yeah. all that. So, a few thumbs were, were little Mjolnirs, little Mjolnir hammers. How many of those ten thumbs would you be worthy of to put up for this movie? Ooh. Do you guys still like it, the way, the way that we make our rating thing very confusing? Yeah, write me it. It's just a I think everybody loves it. I mean, I'm, I get hit up at least thirteen hundred times a week about how people love it. That's often. Yeah, <laughs> it's at least twice a day to reach thirteen hundred. But all right, for this movie, if I had little hammer thumbs, little tiny hammer thumbs, I'd probably have to put almost all of them up. Besides, like three of them. Okay. But then maybe put like half of one that was left up. So you're doing seven and a half so hammer thumbs? like a seven and a half. Okay. I was actually, I was going to go seven and a half exactly oh, as well. Well, because like on a rewatch of this, I will say there were a couple of points that I wouldn't say dragged, but they like borderline lost my interest. Yeah. And it might be because I already kind of know, I just know what happens. Uh, but visually speaking enough of this i was watching i'm like god damn that looks fucking good so it had me for a bunch of that yeah especially for what 11 12 years ago cgi looked great i feel like the action was lacking a little bit the story i thought some of the action was quite good but like the really important action that's, was kind of lackluster yeah that's where it was 
I'll tell you one thing that drives me nuts. I feel nuts. like the best action was at the beginning, the frost giant I fight hate, scene. I hate in a superhero movie where it's like your your lead or whatever is just fighting a big smoky gray monster. Yeah, where the CGI has to be super dark for you to see any part of it. Right, yeah. yeah. Just I'm, I'm over that shit, man. Give me a fun, weird, like James Gunn does in the Suicide Squad where it's it's Starro. It's the middle of the day. It's a giant pink and blue yeah. fucking star alien monster. Yeah. That looks awesome. Uh, yeah, don't give, I don't need a gray, smoky monster. I've seen that shit. Did it look cool? Absolutely. Yeah, 15 years ago, I was really in on it. All the big, gray, smoky monster. But I'm over it. It's just been done to death. Uh, and there wasn't a big, gray, smoky monster in this, but kind of some of the action, like when he finally destroys the destroyer, it's a big, smoky fight. Yeah. It's a big, dark, smoky fight. That do a big tornado. Yeah, it is... <laughs> Nailed it. A thermal man, big tornado. So we're going to go watch another movie. We're going to watch uh, Max Steel, which is a poorly reviewed superhero movie. I actually don't know anything about Max Steel. So I don't even know if it's a DC property or if it's even a comic book thing. But he is definitely a superhero and it is definitely not well reviewed. All right, let's go check it out. Yeah. So here's some fake shit. We'll be back in a minute. Fucking Trick Stevens here. <laughs> All right, you Trick Stevens. Today we're going to be testing out the 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 Walmart Yeti cooler versus the regular Yeti cooler. <laughs> what what are we the... what are we doing, Trick? How many beers is this thing holding? Like a bunch, bro. Like totally a bunch. Walmart. The same amount. Wow. I'm very impressed. Very impressed. How many stinky socks could you fit in this cooler? 900 stinky socks. What's your name? <laughs> Gil, <laughs> Gil Cunningham. Gil, I'm going to have you fucking fired. You're bullshitting me here. It's the I don't give a shit. Bad boy. This is why you're the bad boy. It's because you're just like, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, the, not because you're extreme about it, just because you won't do it. Fucking Chuck Stevens here. <laughs> Brief interjection from your program. I just wanted to throw out a couple of special thanks for the folks that make this show possible. Uh, big thanks to Brad Sexton for our jams, Lamplighter Production for our artwork, God Sized and Growing for some musical guest appearances. And uh, Dave, who's our YouTube editor, we, we probably wouldn't even be on that platform were it not for him. Uh, if you want to check out anything any of these amazing people are working on, all of their links are in the description for this episode. If you want to contact the show, uh, you can hit us up on Twitter or Instagram at It's Just Two Movies. Uh, we've got a Facebook page now, um, so that's on there. Uh, you can always leave us a comment on YouTube, uh, or you can email us at It's Just Two Movies at gmail.com. Okay, yeah, and uh, if you like the show, you know, um, uh, like, subscribe, leave us a leave us a review. That that stuff helps tremendously. So uh, anyway, back to the show. Hey, fam, uh, we're we're back. We watched Max Steel, and uh, I don't know, like first impressions, Dave. Uh, uh, not terrible. Not not great just kind of wasn't really anything that's how i felt like why even make it yeah i don't know <laughs> uh, max Steel is a 2016 action uh, excuse me 2016 pg-13 adventure sci-fi film one hour 32 minute runtime maybe 4.6 out of 10 on imdb 22 percent on metacritic 59 percent of google users like this movie came out october 25th 2016 uh, box office six point three million, budget five million. So it looks like this is profitable ish. Uh, budget estimated between five and ten million. Stars Ben Ben Winchell, Anna Villa Fa Anna Villa Fanye, Andy That'd Garcia. Guess. Huh? That'd be my guess. Andy Garcia, uh, Maria Bello, Josh Brenner. Mike Doyle, Billy Slaughter, and I'm sure some other people that are like even less important and integral to this whole thing. This is pretty much the good get for this is Andy Garcia, although I will say Ben Winchell isn't bad. 
Yeah, the main as your as your like leading your guy. Lead, yeah. yeah, he's he's got some chops. I mean, not he's terrible. not uh, trying to get an up and coming actor. They all can't be Jim. He's not taking home an Oscar, but he's kind of got but a Tom. Got he's kind of got a Tom Holland charm going on Ooh. for him. But he's so much bigger than Tom Holland. Part of Tom Holland's that. charm is the fact that he's a little fella. I don't know about that, but Ooh, it's I give it to you. He's all right. He's well, just a wee lad. <laughs> Before we get into any of this, I just want to make sure that it's perfectly clear. I understand that this is two different animated series and also a line of toys. And did did we say it was also maybe a video game? I don't think. I think that's what you wanted it to be. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, this would have made a good video game. Yeah, give me some of this as like Mega Man or some Tron shit. And that's what it feels like. Yeah, a little more lighthearted, uh, I think, maybe. Uh, I feel like this would be a good film for pre-tens, or pre-teens, maybe. Yeah, your 12s, your 12s, your 11s. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're into Especially action Especially if figures, there's, yeah, good action figure toy line with it. I feel like that's mostly w- what is going on here. Now, I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg in this scenario, Chicken, definitely. But I can imagine they just had a bunch of action figures, and they're like, what do we make? I imagine that the action figures were popular, so they're like, how do we capitalize? Mm. Let's make it a film. Or maybe it was a cartoon first? I don't know. I I don't don't know. know. So, spoiler free, what would you tell other people that this is about? You want me to do it? Yeah. All right. there's There's this kid whose dad is dead. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, he's call. no longer with us. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know if he's dead or if he's projected to an astral plane, or if he's plane. like a, or if he's like a Star Wars Force ghost. But this kid finds out that he has an immense amount of power within him mm-hmm. that he can tap into. He releases tachyon energy. Tachyon, that's it, just like the Flash, right? And. Then his name is Max, and then there's a robot named Steel who can... It's like an alien robot. Thing. Yeah, alien robot for sure, who can help him, like, use that power and can also, like, mind meld with him and mm-hmm. share thoughts and shit. Okay, there's an alien race that's trying to take over the world, or trying to kill everybody, mm-hmm. and Steel is the rebel of that alien race. Right. Who He's pairs like, up with man. You guys shouldn't kill the humans, help. but he does. Yeah. But he doesn't really pair up with humans. He pairs up with an alien. With, yeah. To protect humanity, I guess. Steel, the little robot robot thing, is uh, voice acted by Josh Brenner. I thought he was actually delightful. I'll say, yeah, he, if you've seen Silicon Valley, I think that's an HBO show, is it? I don't know. It's don't a, know. it's a pretty funny I've show. Never seen it, but, but he's I, I big hear, head. I hear good things. He's big head. Okay. He's pretty funny, but his voice acting in this, where he's the com- comedic relief robot yeah. funny guy, is pretty good. I liked it. I'm agreeing with you. Actually, I think he he is probably the best part of this. Uh, like, that like it, and maybe the CGI. I was surprised. I was pretty impressed with yeah. a lot of it. Impressed is the better word. Yeah, I was definitely impressed with. Whatever production or whatever production company put together the CGI on this is just, I don't know if that's where most of their budget went to or what, but it was great. They just didn't do too much, too little, just looked good. Agreed. There was a lot of it that did look good. Um, (laughs) It's weird because we just talked about it. I hate a big smoky monster. And for the first like half of this movie, the bad guy is just a big smoky monster. And later, it's just the same aliens as the as the other alien, uh, which is uh, Steel, which is the one that's uh, voice acted by Josh Brenner. So the the alien little alien guy, he's delightful, but it's weird that the bad guy aliens don't have any sort of a personality. You know what I mean? Like he's the rebel because he has a personality, I guess. Yeah, and that's. I mean, this movie almost just felt like, why did it exist? Like, what was the story that it was portraying? But I feel like it fell flat on the villain, like the extraterrestrial AI robot just didn't have a face behind the villain. 
Right, exactly. And I mean, we were halfway through it, and I was like, is Andy Garcia doing a Obadiah Stane in Iron Man? And you're like, yeah, yeah he definitely is. And uh, yeah, it turned out that th- that is exactly what he was doing. Yeah, and they had a lot of... I was very disappointed in the fighting scenes where they had these two advanced robot or not robots but they had power suits super advanced but they are just doing hand to hand kung fu and it was just okay yeah the kung the, fu was like, all right yeah but we're talking about the having... cgi stuff the big gray smoky monster like the storms and the effect that comes off of his hands and the first time he puts on the or him, him and the alien thing like join together and he has the and suit to on create max steel it looks fucking great Later in the movie, it just looks like a like a motorcycle suit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. as it rides street bikes, right? It just yeah, looks like sure. a motorcycle like suit, like a street suit. Yeah. And then the other guy, he's like, he's wearing the same thing, but it's a different color. It's <clears throat> it's where it's where your protagonist just fights another bad guy with the same skill set. Yeah, but they just completely nerf each other out in the movie and they just have them fight hand-to-hand combat kung fu style yeah and that's what this movie is or that's what this movie climaxes yeah. as even when he figures out that he's got all like super so so max of max steel he's got superpowers he just has them because his dad was an alien so steel which is a robot life form little thing that flies around and, and is hilarious uh, it is an alien from a totally different world. So his dad's an alien. This other thing's an alien. His dad dies, but him and him and the steel that they were a team. Ooh! But then his dad dies. He's like, protect my son, Ooh, and blows up or whatever. So you've just got a you just got a fucking just a just a regular ass alien guy. I- so who wins in the fight? An alien, the good alien. a half alien with the, an alien suit. Yeah, an alien that has superpowers. With a man-made suit. It's the alien with superpowers <laughs> in an alien suit. Uh, All right, let's make it a movie. Fuck, it's wrap we- it up. It's weird because like the first the first time he puts it on, it looks more like armor. Something about the the way the scenes done, it just it looks and feels a little more like armor. Every other time for the rest of the movie, it just kind of feels like a motorcycle suit. Like he's just wearing like a padded jumpsuit. I can see that. The first time he puts it on, it's almost like their like their minds meld to where they share experiences. But right. then every other time it's almost just like it's a it's a suit, but he doesn't do anything special. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And the alien that he is wearing as a suit is like, oh, I'm a master in combat strategy and all these different types of combat. And he's like, well, guess what? I'm in control of this, though, and I can do a flip. He just it was a lot of parkour when he finds out he is a super he can do all this (laughs) superhero shit. It was the scene where he's like revealing that he has powers is kind of mediocre, but I did kind of like some of the the way they put the camera work together. Like, I just, I didn't think it was terrible. I shouldn't say I liked it. I just thought it was par for the course. Uh, but I did take note of it because it wasn't awful or jarring or, you know, just uh, just flat out uh, wrong, uh, which is what I normally see in a lot of these movies that we watch for the second Yeah, and half I feel like show. that's why this movie wasn't, it wasn't necessarily a bad movie. It was shot well. I feel like the story wasn't great and the dialogue wasn't great, but as far as... Far as They're like, just selling action figures, baby. You could definitely... Yeah, that's true. Just, all right, let's create an action figure. Okay, it sells well. Let's make a movie, but that movie's got to sell these fucking action figures. You know that's how He-Man came to be in existence? He-Man, the he- action figure? He-Man and the, Ma- the Masters of the Universe. The no, TV show? It was a toy first. Okay, that's they what made, I would have guessed. They made the TV show to sell toys. But after the toys were already out? Well, they were making the toy because they're like, this is our product. This is what we're going to make. These are the dyes that we got at an expensive. Yeah. This is the paint that we can afford. This is the... These we can make the, we the can make these cheap. That we have. It's actually cheaper for us 
to make a show surrounding an action figure than it is to actually purchase the rights to an existing thing. Right. So, yeah, so that that's the conception with He-Man. It was just a it was just a TV show to sell action figures. I've never gone back and revisited the old He-Man uh, uh, because I remember it fondly as a child, but I was literally its market audience. Yeah, I was gonna say I think He-Man was a little bit before my time. I think I, I think just I only ever, died ever had out right before my time. I think I only ever had like one He-Man toy, so it's probably you had a He-Man. I had a He-Man. He didn't. You couldn't pull his arms off and put him on a Ninja Turtle. So ultimately, I was uh, not impressed. Yeah, I like not... to make cyborg Ninja Turtles. That was my that was my game plan. Anyway, Max Max Payne, Max Steel, Max Max Betts. What um what else do you say about this? Like, other than it being the best movie of all time, it was just okay for me. Like, just okay. Yeah. Did you watch the same movie? <laughs> did we even watch the same thing? I mean, you were there beside me, but did we watch the same thing? Yeah, I thought. Have the, you seen I, Aquaman? I thought the act. Yeah. Yeah. Same movie. Same movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm not buying the the main character as a high school student. I don't know why they're not just like, how about college though? Why? Do, well, or how about college uh, is so similar anyway? Why? How don't about they? he? How about he just exactly. Exactly. It's the same fucking thing. You only can have them still live only at home I believe or do this the, and that. Only I believe the twenty five year old man that you have as the lead character it goes to school it, there. And if you do college, they could even be a forty year old freshman. Who knows? No judgment. Because it's so many of those characters can relate to a a school high school environment, which isn't unrelatable to a middle school or elementary school environment. Maybe that's how it is geared towards kids, but uh, could easily be college and be more available to the people that are paying for those tickets. Maybe you know. Yeah, I, mean? I can see that for sure. My kid's not as interested in them as as I am or always have been. Like I was fascinated with comic book movies and video game movies when I was a kid. Dude, when the Spawn movie came out, get the fuck out of here! I was all over it. Yeah, you're just excited to. Know that somebody else thought to make that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, all about it. And uh, in retrospect, it's a terrible movie. We could definitely watch that on the podcast. We probably should have done that instead of this. Yeah, as the good movie, for yeah, sure. As the <laughs> <laughs> instead of Thor, <laughs> for sure. No, as uh, <laughs> but John Leguizamo as Violator the Clown. He's he's great. I don't think I've seen Spawn. Oh, man. It's, so maybe if it's, we it's might not, do it's not great. The Dark World, maybe we will do that one. Ooh, that'd bad be one. good. He's got a red cape. Those would go really well together because we could be like, it's about red capes. And then just stay on the John Luke Guizamo train and fucking watch Pest. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's our next tie-in. So what do you remember what they called the the bad aliens on this one? They're um ooh, Link uh, Link Ultra Links. That's what they're Ultra called. Links, Ultra yeah. Links. They're b- bad robots, but they're the same thing as Steel, which steel is really his real name's like uh, is an Ultra a, It's Link. like Ass Steel is his real name or something. I don't know cuz I've never seen another Max Steel property. Uh so I don't know anything about it. But you didn't have all the toys? No. I thought that's I, why we watched this as the good movie. No. Because you thought I just loved it? Yeah. Well, you're wrong, brother. Fuck. What's this fucking toy, then? I thought we were playing Max Steel oh, video games uh, all night. That's Zach Peel. He's half banana. <laughs> I got you. Got you, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> you fucking... <laughs> so, I mean, what do you think about that? If your thumbs, if your thumbs were fucking horny high schoolers, how many... <laughs> I think on my, I feel like this. Or if you, no, wait, if your thumbs. Okay, I'll wait. Just give me a second. Wait. All right. If your thumbs were aliens. Right, what? If your thumbs were aliens wearing suits made of different aliens. Okay. How many, how many thumbs you give the old fucking Max Steel? That's probably the best rating system we've had so far. That's a I, pretty good one. I can one. actually break it down between each different like part. Layers of, of the, aliens. Yeah. yeah it's a, there's okay. a built in .5. Well, I feel like this is this is almost dead center as you can get. 
But yeah. as far as yeah. my rating system goes, this really shows where you put things because the worst of the worst, of course, is going to be a zero, but almost nothing can ever be perfection. So something right. that is dead center, I'm going to have to put Max Steel at four aliens flat. Four aliens flat? Okay, four alien thumbs. Four alien thumb armors. Wearing wearing, wearing other... a different alien yes. as a thumb. So, so four thumbs. Uh I'm gonna go I'm gonna go five and a half. The half is because I was impressed with some of the CGI, like the like power traces or whatever that come out of his fingertips or whatever. I was like, think that of, like, looks the great theory. It made me think everything is connected. It made me think of like having a like wet spider webs come out of your fingertips kind of thing. Uh it's kind of gross, but I thought it looked good. Yeah, spider semen yeah, for sure. That thing. Yeah, spider cum. That's that's what it is. But that that part I was like that that looks good. Like there's one bit where he puts on the suit and it looks pretty good and then the rest of it is just very like but the uh, steel, the little flying mm -hmm. robot or whatever with his little, uh, you know, different vents and shit that help him show expression. I thought he looked incredible. Yeah, I feel like the character design of him and almost, yeah, the whole character design of Steel was great. Yeah. Best part of the whole movie, Steel. Fuck Max, give me a Steel movie. Yeah, just give me a Steel <laughs> movie where he just like gloms on to some, some, anybody, some dude, just some Ever dude getting venom? groceries or whatever. Yeah, Do exactly. That, He's steel. doing a Venom. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's the next part of the show where we explain how we could do the movie better. Oh my god, just he is a venom. Just steel, a steel is <laughs> steel is just a venom. He's just venom. So I'd have got Tom Hardy. <laughs> I'd have had him not fight a, 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 a another entity that's the same thing that he is. Ooh, but then because I hate venom that and shit. Carnage. I hate that shit. Did you hate Carnage though? You don't. No. So let's no, <laughs> because that's it. it's Carnage is a little bit different though. Because in the first Venom movie, what's the one called that he fights? Is it Riot? Riot, yes. Where they're both just black, slimy they're monsters. Both the same thing. And even in even in Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage, he's still just fighting another thing that's the same as him. The only difference is it's the character it's behind property, it. It's the character behind it and its properties behave differently, and it's a totally different color. Because in the first Venom movie, they're both just big black monsters. One's off black. <laughs> <laughs> one's blacker and one's got like a couple of white veins in Ever it. Ever seen a green black? It's Imagine hard to, that, but darker. It's hard to discern how the actual fight is going when they're fighting on that dock or whatever it is at the For end sure. of that movie. Uh, because it's just, I hate the trope of our character fights another thing that has the same powers. It's the same thing, but a little bit different. Like the first Iron Man movie where he fights Iron Monger at the end or whatever. I'm like, Bleh. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. He just fights Bucky Barnes. He just fights another super soldier. But he's got a metal arm, so he's a little bit different. But they know each other. Like It's just, it's the trope. So they build extra elements on top of it to make it more interesting. In Captain America, the Winter Soldier, for instance. We'll use that as a good staple because this is actually a pretty good one. Uh, so Bucky Barnes, also a super soldier. Also has his fucking crazy metal arm. So he's got Captain America's metal metal. They, they have all these same fucking talents. They're excellent fucking outstanding soldiers. They're an amazing shot. World-class assassins, but Cap's not really an assassin. What makes that story compelling is the fact about his memory loss and the fact that they know each other and the fact that they're friends or whatever. Ironmonger, it's just like, a guy stole your tech and you fight the same you fight the same guy, Ant Man, same fucking thing. Ant Man fights another Ant Man at the end of Ant Man. It just I don't it's like it's whatever. It's 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 very played out in these types of films, and if you could easily avoid it with a different storyline, why wouldn't you? Because it's a, such a common trope. For sure. I feel like I don't know. Now that you point it out, I feel like that almost, I don't know if that's just the easiest thing to go to, but I feel like that's almost the easiest thing to start with. It to is. To grow your character. Yeah, it probably but is. most things just aren't good enough to get 
picked up for the sequels and the world expansion Maybe that's where why you sp- don't see the next one you just see them facing themselves but a little bit different so it's not too hard to explain yeah <laughs> yeah that might be the de- that might be the deal but i don't know man i like i like things that are more compelling because things that compel you more things that compel me in more like guardians of the galaxy for instance on. okay so you got you got your you got your peter quill he's just a guy essentially you're like right. you don't see any supernatural qualities yeah. of him, he's and he's going against this dude that's like a religious fucking fanatic of a different race of aliens or whatever that essentially yeah. has a doomsday weapon, and he's just a man. He's got his ragtag team, and the other guy's got some ragtag fucking you know goons or whatever, but they are not the same. This dude has a fucking warship and a fucking army behind him. And And he's a weird fucking blue, uh, you know, super hyper religious cult alien. And then you've got Peter Quill, who's from Missouri and just likes the Bee Gees or whatever. So that's a very different, but that still can be your introductory story and that can be great. You can still show character growth and an arc in that story that isn't Peter Quill just fights another Peter Quill. At the end of it. Yeah, for sure. But they they do that a lot. They do it a ton. Even in the first uh, uh, Hulk movie where he fights Abomination at the end. So it's, it's just yeah, Hulk, another Hulk. Hulk v. Herc. Hulk v. Hulk. Hulk v. Herc. Hulk v. Herc. I see a word sometimes. Uh, yeah. Comes right. But uh, I would change that about it if I could. Um, I would make him in college because... Why not? Uh, why not? Yeah, and I would dial up. I think up, because okay, I would dial up the steel. I'm gonna throw a wrench in your college plan. Go for it. I'm thinking maybe recast them completely and put them in middle school. You laugh at it, but he doesn't have any. Like he has just the slightest romantic. Like he doesn't have anything that's college level that's romance. True. He like barely. You can have he, some middle school romance he, in there. He, they do a kiss at the end, and he's just learning his powers. So I feel like if you put him in middle school, this should be like a you puberty, could put the sequel, a puberty type of uh, yeah, situation, yeah. a coming to age more story. I feel like I just said puberty twice. You know, puberty, and I didn't even catch it. You know, we all got that puberty. We all got that puberty, baby. <laughs> You get me and me assume puberty. <laughs> so yeah, no, you know what? I agree with that. I like that. Do you have anybody that you would get to play? Like, who would you get? I don't know that. I don't know that I know any actors any that are like actors that are. You know, any child actors that are in their like early teens? Not that aren't in the porn. No, Frankie Muniz. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Frankie uh, Muniz. Frankie Muniz, yeah, 20 years ago. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay, He probably maybe. still looks like a baby. Uh, Elijah Wood, I'm you could get think. him to play a middle schooler. <laughs> well, this was out in 2016. Get so pa- Get Paul Dano to be your bad guy. Just get Tom just, Holland just full grown, to be 2016. Full grown old. men that have just baby faces. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. You're pretending to be in middle school. Yeah. Uh, you've been held back 19 years, but... Yeah, you're, de- you're, dying you're in love to, with your teacher. You're dying to, to defend the world. You, that's a different show. That's a TV <laughs> show, actually. That happened at the school we went to. Anyway, different story. All right, well, with a uh, middle school, you just get an up-and-coming actor. You know, you yeah, look at, yeah, you you look some, at the stats get some, and shit. Uh, some you rando get some. kid. Get yourself a Selena Gomez. Yeah. Just go go creeping on whatever whatever Nickelodeon's got going on. Or... or the Disney Channel. There's your all your child actors that they're grooming for it forever. Aren't like a zillion Disney actors like famous now still like child actors? Yeah, like uh, that one guy and the other one. Yeah, super famous. Everybody knows them. And then there's that girl. Well, yeah. No, I mean like Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears. What? Just, I Justin, thought you were talking about nowadays, like Disney. Well, Justin Timberlake. Uh, Lizzie McGuire, oh, whoever that is, that's a thing. That's that like she's like a still a famous ago person. Disney. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like oh, all okay. the like uh, Ariana no, you Ariana Grande. It. There's a more more relevant one. Disney characters. Yeah, ha- Hannah 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 yeah, yeah, not yeah, Hannah yeah. Montana. What's her name? Ma- Miley Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. Yeah, the constellation. 
I don't. Is, is there anything else you would do differently about this? About this fucking this uh, thing? It's not a mess. It just it feels like disingenuine. Uh, I mean, honestly, to make it better, it is just so lackluster that it doesn't. I don't know. I would give the. I just love a good villain. You would have to just definitely give. And yeah, I'm just jumping on the Danny bandwagon and changing the villain from yeah. Instead of making it the same robot of steel, make it something make interesting. It, yeah, anything. Think of an alien. Boom, that's your villain. Alien, this thing. Job of the but, hut. Boom, done. There you go. More interesting yeah. than having that the same character or same race as steel just a squid monster doesn't matter and just an unimaginable squid a squid so amazing you can't even yeah imagine and even it. if it had the same it could come from the same planet as steel and be like of the same like culture essentially mm -hmm. but just be a different race to where it is different to where it's having some sort of difference to the story yeah i would say just give me a giant squid monster Maybe have Steel's mom get her titties out. Maybe a Godzilla. And I'll take and it. Some titties a plus out. movie. Yeah, I'd be all in on that. <laughs> Hollywood, contact us at it's just a movies at gmail dot com at it's just a movies on Twitter or Instagram. Uh oh shit, yeah, we had a uh we had a listener, um his, his name is John. Uh and he was he was uh John who? I don't know, I don't fucking know. John was sending me some messages and we were having a little little chit chat. And uh, he was talking about how he's like, you know, uh, I, I pointed out a thing in a movie uh, and somebody else was like, oh, I, I sit around very, very proud of myself when I point out a thing in a movie. And I was like, oh, yeah, because he's a fan of the show. I was like, I did that one time on an episode when uh, Renee was on. No, we were doing one of Renee's favorite movies. This means war. And uh, Derek Waters was in that movie for like 10 seconds, not even 10 seconds, half a second. And I was like, that's Derek Waters. And I was very proud of myself for it. And he said that uh, his wife had just watched that movie last week. And he was like watching the movie intently, waiting to see Derek Waters in it. You know what I'm saying? From the episode that you mentioned. About. From the episode that we mentioned, like, oh, yeah, we watched this movie and Derek Waters was in it for like half a second. If you think you can fucking spot him because it the camera doesn't even focus on his face. It just like pans by him. Yeah, that's that's how I felt almost in the Thor movie. Someone told me or I seen on. No, it was on YouTube. I follow new rock stars and they yeah. do breakdowns. And he said that you can see like, you know, when Milner is uh fuck is stuck in the ground and everybody's trying to sword in the stone pull a mountain stan lee rips his truck bed out of his truck to mm -hmm. try to pull the hammer out yeah and the scene where thor is in the diner stan lee's truck without a bed drives by in the back oh nice yeah, <laughs> yeah i didn't notice that that's uh that's good but uh well, anyway, if you want to reach out to John, it looks like he owns a business called Two Kings Barbecue in Central Ohio. Uh, next time, which I've, I've checked out his shit before. If uh, if I am ever in Central Ohio, I'm coming for that fucking brisket because Central Ohio, mm -hmm. Ohio is a state. Is it got a city located with well, that? It just says fucking Central Ohio, baby. I don't know Ohio. I'm from Missouri. It's originally brought up on Southern Barbecue from Alabama. Now we're sharing it with you in Central Ohio. Ooh. Suck it up, well, Central if you're there, Ohio. Check it out. Get your fucking get get the get the. Some people look, smoke it. Some people bake it. Some people fucking we don't, grill it. We don't talk about it on the podcast, but I fucking I do my fair share of of uh, fancy work on the on the smoker. But I gotta tell you, just flipping through these picks, that brisket looks bomb as fuck. What'd you say the name of this guy was? Two or the kings. Name of the place. Ring, ring, two kings. Just like the Tenacious D skit. Ring, ring, two kings? Yeah, two kings. I do not recall. Hey, dude, I fucking love you. Uh, What? I said I fucking love you, man. Okay. I like you, too. You know what? It was a test. You passed. F plus. 
No, no dice. All right, zero dice. Well, you can also look up the <laughs> Tenacious D album, whatever the first one was called. Oh. But uh, anyway, yeah, he, he and I had a uh, had a had a little lovely chat. Well, he asked me about a movie specifically. Let me see if it and was. And he gets the fan shout out email letter of the week. Yeah, he get yeah that was that was pretty much it. Is that we'd pointed out a fun thing, and somebody else was excited to see that fun thing. So yeah, so yeah. So if you have other fun things, and if you, you want like other a, people to know about those fun things, if you like a fun, if you like a fun fun thing, then let us know about it. Because we like fun, fun things. Mm-hmm. He's got some, uh, he left some good uh, references for some, like, indie horror kind of schlocky, schlocky stuff. Uh, Freaks of Nature, Blood-Sucking Bastards, Cooties, which I think I've seen, uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen Cooties. Scout's Guide oh, to the Zombie Cooties? Apocalypse, yeah. which I have seen is outstanding. Wait, what was that? Uh, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Oh, definitely seen that. And Great. Uh, Freaks of Nature. I've seen Freaks of Nature, and that's a haven't that's a checked good out Freaks of Nature. I'm gonna check gotta out. Gotta check it out. Since I'm gonna I like check out too. Blood Sucking Bastards at some point. Also, in other news, um, the week we're recording this, Hot Fuzz turned 15. God, that makes me feel old as shit. That doesn't make any sense. Because I seen Hot Fuzz when I was like, oh god damn, oof, as they <laughs> as the as the kids like to say, Oofenheim. So, yeah, I mean, that's the end of that. Do you have anything else for the fucking movie that we talked about? For Scott Pilgrim Next segment! <laughs> for Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Hey, what you watching? What, uh, what have you been watching, Dave? What have you been getting into? Uh, what have I been watching? Moon yeah, Knight. The segment of the show. What you been? Wa- what you watching? Oh, what you watching is a segment. Yeah. Oh yeah, because Dave, I, li- I listen to the show all the time. I know this segment from Dave's, start to finish. So my Dave, favorite. Dave's our YouTube editor. If you haven't connected those dots. Oh, shit! I almost forgot the one for this week. If you guys watched it, let me know how it is. But what I've been watching has been Moon Knight every and? week. For three to four weeks, depending how, on how many episodes I've watched, I don't remember. How is Poon Night so far? I would definitely say it's not for everybody. Hmm. Because everybody doesn't have exquisite tastes like I. But it should be for you, so watch it. I will. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm in No, it's it. definitely good. It uh, should definitely catch your interest. I think you personally would probably like it. I don't know much about Egyptian. Well, I've, uh, I've talked about it briefly on the show. I don't know jack shit about Moon Knight. I, like, I know what I got from the first episode and a couple of posts I saw on Instagram. Yeah, I knew uh, Yeah, just the minuscule amount of his like character, but nothing really about any part of a story, or even that it was Egyptian-based. But... I don't know, it's really gotten me, almost like how Thor ties in with all the Nordic shit, how it makes you want to know more about that lore and about yeah. the religion. Because a lot of it's historically accurate. A lot right. of it is not, but, you know, they take the bones from historical accuracy. Right, and that's where I feel like Moon Knight does do pretty well with the Egyptian side of the, I don't know if you'd call it a religion or not, I guess you would, all oh, the legend. Yeah, the yeah, I get lore. you. They, they they dive into it a little deeper. Uh, no, not at all, really. But they mention some of it to intrigue you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I'm like I said, I'm not things. at the end of it, so they definitely could expand a lot more because each okay. episode is an hour. I uh, I re- I read a thing uh, before it even came out where they they somebody had interviewed Oscar Isaac and he's like uh, he's like I'm super proud of episode four it's gonna fucking blow people's mind so I don't know if that's the one you've seen or not I don't know because I haven't watched any of it you know what I've been up to what deliberately have you been up to? deliberately this week because I knew you were coming on the show I was like I'm gonna dig back into some Marvel stuff. So I watched the rest of What If, which I had never seen. There were four or five episodes of What If I hadn't watched. Oh, yeah? And uh, I actually, I finished Loki, which it's dumb that I had never finished it. I just, I binged it all in one day. Oh, the series? Yeah, but there was one episode that hadn't come out, so I never finished it. The finale? Yeah, I never watched the finale. 
So I went back and I watched the second to the last episode and then the last episode. Tickled you impressed? I liked it very much, yeah. I feel like the MCU on the uh, TV series side of things has been killing it. Starting with WandaVision, like, WandaVision was great. Well, Loki I think, killed it. I think Jonathan Majors is such a fucking oh outstanding. He's such an outstanding addition to the MCU. Also, I recently watched The Harder They Fall, which is fucking amazing. Have you seen that? No. Harder it They Fall? The Harder They Fall. The Harder They Fall. Uh, it's a Netflix original. Uh, so Western's got 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, 6.6 6 out of 10 on IMDb, 68% on Meta, 83% of Google users liked it. It's not old. It's kind of just like, uh, it's got kind of some Quentin Tarantino vibes to it. And it also has some like, I don't know, like uh, kind of a poppy vibe to it that I really like. Um, but it's a, just a, a fun Western. And Jonathan Majors is in that? Jonathan Majors stars in it. Ooh, because I didn't Jonathan know Ma anything Jonathan, of him here you until Loki. Idris Elba, Zazie, oh, fuck. Zazie Bates, Jonathan Majors, Regina King, Lakeith Stanfield, uh, R.J. Seiler, who I didn't, I didn't know from anything before this, but he's delightful. And yeah, uh, Daniel Dead Dead Ryler. And for the people who don't listen to you, you said the name of that was what? Uh, it's called like, oh, that's you. I get it. It's called the harder they fall. Yeah, add that add that shit to your watch list, man. That's fucking awesome. And that's what we did right there. Boom, baby. The harder they fall. I mean, just that cast list. I feel like. I don't know, a lot of movies can just get me with that. You just give me a decent cast list, I'm, I'm interested. Always, it doesn't I'm matter what you wrote like, for them. I feel like like star, like you can still get a crowd to the theater based on your casting, but I don't think it has anything to do with star power. For sure. It's a lot like, harder I've, than it used to be. I'm not going to go see a movie just because Chris Hemsworth's in it. Right, or like how it used to be with Tom Cruise and his Top Gun. Like, a lot of yeah. people would go watch that just because of Tom Cruise. Literally just because Tom Cruise is in it and be like, right. oh, I like him. I like his films. Well, they're they're not his films. They're they're Martin Scorsese's films, but, we, you know, whatever. Uh, for the most part, anyway. Yeah, but so, Jonathan yeah. Majors, I don't know if the people listening, if you at home listening knows who he is. But fucking watch Logie. Get on the train, hype him up. He's coming to the MCU. Get ready for him. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be good stuff too. I like him as a he's he's a in Loki. He is a variant of Kang the Conqueror, uh, which is a a great Marvel villain. No, he's not <clears throat> Kang the Conqueror. He's not Kang the Conqueror. Uh -uh. He who remains is is not a Kang variant. It is a Kang variant, but not the Conqueror. Not the yeah, known no, one as he's a, the Conqueror. A variant of Kang the Conqueror. Well, okay, Kang the Conqueror is one of the variants of him. Anyway, it doesn't Correct. matter. He'll be, the same actor will likely be back as Kang the Conqueror, which is great, though, because yeah. Jonathan Majors is great. If, did you watch uh, Love, Lovecraft World? Love, Lovecraft Love? No. Love, Lovecraft World. It's a movie Lovecraft, that came out that Lovecraft wasn't Land? MCU? No, I don't think no, I've seen it. It's a HBO series. I watched oh, a TV show? I watched three episodes of it and kind of fell off, but I have always been like, I always remember it. And I'm like, I'm going to go back to that and watch it someday, but I haven't yet. But he stars in that as well. Oh, fuck. I don't know. I've never seen. Okay. I'm going to go out Dude. on record right now and say, no, I feel like his performance and Loki was almost the most mem memorable Hands down. Just because I've never seen him in anything before, but he's it made so me want to look him up and he's see so his... He's so fucking animated, man. Yeah, just to see what he's been in, to see mm. him act, just because of how lively or how Dude, characteristic that, he is. And that movie he's in, uh, The Heart of They Fall, with Lakeith Stanfield, the first time I watched uh, Sorry to Bother You, I was like, I'm all in on this guy. This guy's fucking amazing. Uh, so Lakeith Stanfield, I believe, is also in Atlanta, uh, hmm. which the cast of Atlanta includes the guy that played uh, from the Immortals. From the Immortals, that fucking no, the uh, the Marvel twenty twenty one Immortals. 
Eternals. Uh, hold on, I gotta find this. I gotta, I gotta pull him up. Why is he not top build? That's fucking crazy. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry. The Immortals that make your Rourke movie. Eternals. Wait. Eternals. You said Immortals. I said Immortals. Well, whatever. Fuck. I'm fucking wrong, run man. the tape back. Everybody email in. Who's Eternals. Right? Yeah, email me. <laughs> Tell me what a drunk piece of shit I am. I already know. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> All right, Eternals. All right, who's in it? You yeah, said the Joker. Uh, I was saying uh, Brian Tyree Henry. Uh, Wait, he's, who is he? He's in Eternals. He plays. Uh, Fast, oh, the guy Fastus? from Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Fastus? Uh, yeah. Fastus. Uh, anyway, he's also in the cast of Atlanta, which is shared by. Yeah. He's big Lakeith boy. Stan- no, who's what's shared his name? by Lakeith. Paper boy. Shared by Lakeith Stanfield, uh, which is also shared by um, Daniel Glover. So who's also in the MCU, maybe as uh, Prowler. Yeah. Yeah, that's who. Because yeah. when Spider-Man's in Bro- when when Tom Holland's yeah, in Brooklyn in the it. first movie, he's yeah, like, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. They made Aaron Davis. I forget how they worded it. Yeah, but they made him. God, what, my he, nephew's looking he, for something. Yeah, my nephew lives around here, man. Yeah. I want to keep these streets safe or that's whatever, was, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Now he's also like Jonathan Mayers is also you know MCU canon. All all those guys from that from that one show, uh, which is fucking great because they're. And you finished Loki, and you. I finished Loki. I loved it. Loved it. Nice. Yeah, nice, yeah. Nice. I'm all in on it. You watch all. I don't know if he's mentioned. You watch all Hawkeye. Oh fu- yeah, yeah. I watched it. Um, I don't know, maybe like two or three months ago. I think you and I actually the last time you were on the show, I think I had just wrapped it up and was was saying that I I liked okay. it. Okay. I I really, <clears throat> man, like for me, I think it's gonna be Falcon and the Winter Soldier. No, probably gonna be Loki, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Wandavision, and then um, the one that I just right. finished. I have not to. Loki. Then then maybe what if? I don't know. I wasn't really crazy about a bunch of what I'll if. Like pull... it was it was fine, but I could tell where it was going well before it got there. On what if? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll have to politely decline and tell you that WandaVision was the best TV I, series I to liked, come out. I loved WandaVision. I liked it a lot. I just thought WandaVision the I first feel like... the first 3 episodes were a little disconnected. And I thought that they could have taken the first two or three episodes and made them one. Okay, I kind of, I kind of see what you're saying, but the first, but I the did first love couple episodes where people were kind of, where you're not knowing where they're going, where you're not and knowing what, what they're doing. No, I, lo- I love that. Part. That's what I loved, yeah. and I loved how they did it week to week, to where you. That was almost the first show that I felt like you were getting the different feel from the netflix instant release to where you get the full 8 12 episodes right at once to where you're getting the week to week right where you have the time to think about it you have the time to talk with your community or your yeah yeah whoever else you know is wanting to watch it with you to where that's why i really liked it and that's where i feel like it did it better than any of the other ones and you said you put Falcon and Winter Soldier first. I really liked Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Before. I have to put that behind Wanda and Loki. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, it's like but six to one and a half dozen the other. Loki had a little bit that dragged in the middle. For me, WandaVision kind of dragged in the first half a bit. And Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I, ne- I, I think it, it might have just been my mindset when I watched it. Because I was always like, this is like a buddy cop. I think, yeah, I feel like it's like a buddy cop thing. That's where our ratings might be different because I, I'm almost rating it kind of like Moon Knight to where it's my interest between episodes. Am I mm. looking up different content to try to, you know, yeah, I get figure that. out about characters or different things yeah. to have my interest in the episode to where Wanda and Loki both did that very well because Loki with the Sylvie character they're introducing a new character to where you don't know if they're trying to build the character for something nefarious I like did they like did the, in this Thor movie that we I, watched with Loki or I, if they I did like the variants. I like I thought that was a nice touch when they're like, "Oh, the 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 kid and he's like the prince or whatever." And they're like, "Don't fuck with the kid." And he's like, "Oh yeah, what was your why are you here? What was your time crime or whatever?" And he's yeah. like, "I killed Thor." 
Right. Like, oh shit. You're like, <laughs> All oh, right. Fuck. Okay. I remember thinking about that, but you so did you're, it. You're either A, ridiculously strong, or B, you the slickest motherfucker in the crowd. All right. So, psychotic badass or just a physical badass? We're still yet to find out. Or he could have just had a stupid Thor. It's not like anybody ever right, it could entertained be like the that what possibility. If, the what if party Thor. To what if Thor was just, just an idiot? You know, gave him some fucking fentanyl fucking beer. Yeah. And he's just yeah, like, yeah. let's get drunk. And he's dead. Right. <laughs> right. And they jettison him out into space, you know, uh, as they are one to do. Got anything else you've been uh, getting into or? Oh, man, it's hard for me. I might need to start listening to the episode that I was on before to let you guys know what I've been into. Hmm. Uh, I made Master Rank on Unite. Oh, shit. For anybody that plays Pokemon Unite, that's the highest rank that starts going off I do. That's of... a thing that I've been up to. Oh, I've shit. been playing You've some been, Pokemon Unite because I'm like, more recent? I'll get on and play with Dave sometime, but you're never on when I get on. Like, it's not... When I say I'm yeah. like, I play video games, I mean like for two and a half hours over the last week. Yeah, and you like you weren't online. online. Yeah. <laughs> so... You really slacking off, Dave. Is what you're, saying. <laughs> you're doing a, not a very good well, job. Well, to be honest online. with you, I started a new account on Renee's Switch profile, and I've been playing through the ranks again because with my master rank profile, I couldn't even play with you. Right. But you can't with, even play with me no more? Yeah. That's bullshit, dude. But with Renee's expert ranked account, Ooh. I'll play with you. How do I, when we're done here, you want, can, can I boot up mine and you can like be like, oh, here's some, some tweaks you need to make, or here's a good thing to spend your points on or whatever. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. 100%. And I can tell you how to it. play the 10 minutes. Do you want to go max. see, do you want to see the bulbous part of my Bulbasaur? Yeah, I do. You guys aren't going to start sucking each other's dicks, are you? Let's go, let's go, let's go. We're a one-eyed Batman. Can I make a suggestion that doesn't involve violence or is this the wrong crowd? Maybe we should call in a bomb threat to Houston. I think it's free beer night at the Astrodome. The Jedi, Bob, we don't fight with guns, we fight with the mind. Guys in business is out booming. But I have this one big pile of shit. <laughs> Jail gone. It's Just Two Movies is a production of Blue Cheese and Bacon Studios and can be found wherever you get your podcasts. I thought we were playing Max Steel oh, video games uh, all night. That's Zach Peel. He's half banana. I <laughs> got you. Got you, <laughs> son of a bitch. You fucking. <laughs>